More than 100 Nobel laureates have signed their name to an open letter challenging Greenpeace to end its opposition to genetically modified food. It's a move that's being welcomed by Genetics Otago Director Peter Dearden and he joins us now to talk about it. Good evening. Hi Why do you think this petition has come about? I think what we're looking at is frustration. If you look at the list of names of the people who wrote on, on who signed the letter, they're the, the rock stars of, of biology in the last 60 years. And I think many of them have developed technologies and ideas that they think can be very useful in, in um, improving the food supply or controlling pests and that they can't use those things because of this opposition to genetic modification. Do you think there's a lot of misinformation around genetically modified food? I think the biggest problem is that people feel that there is a risk inherent in any genetic modification. And I think we have to remember that actually as humans we've been genetically modifying plants and animals in a kind of random way for a long time. Mm. And really the techniques that we have now are more precise and more careful and, and that seems to be what's triggering um, sort of disquiet. So it seems like we, we forget that actually we've modified the world around us and the organisms that live with us and, and this is just an extension of doing that. What sort of modifications are happening to our fruit and vegetables? Or whatever. So in food there's, there's um, people who are interested in um, fortifying food, ensuring that it has nutrients to solve particular public health issues. There's people who are interested in um, providing uh, insecticide resistance or resistance uh, to get rid of insects so they don't have to spray insecticides on crops. There are um, things which allow you to, to deal with uh, weeds in your crops, so keeping your plants uh, perfectly fine while you spray them with a, with a herbicide. Um, I think these are useful things, but I, I think there are also huge advantages in using these kind of technologies for things like pest control, where we could actually, um, in, New, in New Zealand for example, we could, we could attack some of the pests which damage our crops and our environment in a, in, a, in a way which is cheap and expensive and doesn't involve spreading poisons mm. everywhere. So there's lots of different kind of technologies that are being used. Do you think that Greenpeace's current stance is too extreme? I think it is. I think that, um, I mean, I value Greenpeace for what they do and that they have, think about the environment and they think about the evidence for particular points of view and ways of dealing with the environment. And I think Greenpeace needs to look at the data and see that actually the evidence that genetically modified um, plants are any more dangerous than ones that are produced by traditional bre breeding um, isn't there. There's no evidence that there's, there's a problem with these plants. Uh, that doesn't mean that we should just throw away any regulation at all. I think we should st still need to look at um, plants and animals that are genetically modified and think out about what they're used for and what damage they might have and what the benefits are. But I think this kind of blanket view that all genetic modification is bad is, is extreme and, and needs to change. Why do they have that stance? It's very hard to know really. I think, um, I think it's really a, a kind of uh, problem more with globalization and big companies. One of the things that we've seen in agriculture is big companies controlling the supply of things like seeds. Um, mm. And so you can see if you're thinking about small producers and subsistence, subsistence farmers that the idea that a big company owns all the seeds and doesn't allow you to grow your own crops and, and, and control your own destiny in terms of farming, um, I think that's a, a bad thing. And I think you can see that Greenpeace is acting on those kind of views. Genetic modification doesn't cause those problems. It can be in, involved in the sort of globalization and commercialization of these, of these um, plants and animals, but it, it's really not the problem that's causing that, um, that kind of commercial attitude to farming and food. Is it a public perception thing? I think there's a public perception thing. I think it, genetics and uh, genetic modification in particular looks a bit like um, Frankenstein. You know, mm. we're fiddling with nature and, mm. and we're um, doing things that we don't understand. The fact is that we do understand many of these things. We have the ability to change a single piece of DNA in an organism leaving no trace whatsoever. And we have the ability to look at what happens to the organism that we've done that to. And so nobody wants to release genetically modified organisms which might be damaging or hurtful or, or hurt people. What, what is wanted is to develop things which will be an improvement or will help with human health or with help with nutrition or help with pest control. And I think you've got to recognize that actually these, this is a tool that we're not using and we could and it could be very effective. What is next for this open letter? I don't know, it's, uh, again, it's kind of hard to say. Mm. I, it would be nice to see Greenpeace respond uh, in a rather more measured way than they have. I think Greenpeace have sort of dismissed some of the concerns and, and, and you know the letter is extreme in some parts. I think mm. it's, it, it can be a bit brutal. Um, 
But it's, uh, I think that you've got such a coalition of very, very smart people um, who are saying, actually, it's time for us to look at this again. I hope that means that governments around the world will start saying, well, maybe it's time to look at our regulations. And maybe uh, the public, too, might start thinking, well, maybe we need to look at this issue again and, and see where the benefits might be and see what the, the costs might be. Jeanette Otago, Director Peter Dean, thanks so much for your time. You're very welcome.